welcome to the Uncommon Career Podcast, helping you tap into your God-given identity so that you can get confident, get hired, and boost your income. Subscribe for career motivation and God stories, for practical job search and career advancement strategies, and for biblical truths to help you thrive at work and make an impact. Hey friends, welcome back. So today I want to share with you some wins and some lows. So we're going to go through the gamut of emotion um, because I just got off the phone with one of my clients and he is doing an excellent job. I'm so excited for him. He just got a second interview and this is one of those things that you see the job description and you think it would be so cool to work at this company in this particular role. It's a, a data analyst role. And at the same time, you know, he thought, Oh, but that's, that's a really cool company that might be a little bit difficult to get. It might be really competitive and it is, it's competitive out there. But at the same time that it's competitive, he is doing everything he needs to do to stand out. He's showing more of his personality. He's just, he's doing everything right. So let me, let me back up a little bit and start at the beginning. So Brandon came to me, what, like the beginning of January is when we kicked things off. And in the beginning, it was hard to get things done because we were just kind of finding our way through and I would, you know, post some information for him and he might look at a couple different positions. Um, but as we gained momentum, he started reaching out to me, asking for a mock interview and getting the resume done, working on the cover letter. And the reality is that in the beginning, there maybe wasn't as much confidence confident in that, you know, we all have this, we maybe are not as confident in our ability to, you know, create a great cover letter or to capture someone's attention in the interview. And so when we first started, the first mock interview I did, it was a little difficult to get through because he kind of was figuring out like, well, what do I say for this response that makes a good impression? And when you first start really anything, you feel like you don't know where to even pull from to get good content, good responses to questions and how to make a good impact. And at the same time, share your experience. And at the same time, not be too formal. Like there are so many different moving pieces to have a solid interview. But I could see branding putting each piece together and taking every piece of feedback and Number one, taking it very gracefully. If I provided him with some feedback, he understood the positive in it, what he did well, and he also understood how he can change and tweak a few of his responses. And even better, he really got it when I was talking to him about a mindset. It's not just the answers and the responses that you change in order to step it up and be a top candidate. It's really your ability to connect with another person, to be yourself and to be free to kind of share just a tiny little bit of like your quirks and those little things that make you, you, and those pieces of your personality that are going to make other folks really enjoy working with you. So as I talked more to Brandon, as we went through our mock interviews and the feedback sessions and just the entire process, he got it. And he went to a job fair, spoke with a couple different contacts. And next thing you know, I think it was last week, we started gaining so much momentum and he's had conversations with multiple companies now. He's had multiple interviews. And in fact, through one of the interviews, they didn't move forward, but it was almost a mutual decision because he found as a result of that interview that this was not the right position for him. And this is what I want for you too. I want you to recognize that if it doesn't work out in an interview, it means maybe it wasn't a good fit for them, but it also maybe wasn't a good fit for you. So in this case, it really was not a rejection at all. It was simply a, hey, you're a good company with a good position. I'm a good candidate, but I don't think that you have what I'm looking for at this point in time. And the better piece that came out of that is that now Brandon is looking at other positions at that same company and he's showing a tenacity and a commitment to that company by applying for positions that are a better fit. And so when he goes to interview for those positions, he can discuss and share just a little bit about the story of how he got connected to that company and how now he's returning because he learned that he loves that company, he enjoys that company, and he would like to work there once 
a good fit is found. So now he's bringing more depth to the story. Now he's bringing more knowledge about the company and he's showing a strong interest. All of this to say that the momentum you get, not only when, you know, whether or not you work with the coach, but I think it happens so much faster when you work with the coach, but the momentum that you get moving through the process, when you get to that point where you realize, I am in full control of my career. I can make it go up and I can make it go down. I can make it go in one direction, or I can make it pivot and I can shift into a totally different industry in a totally different arena. And once we realize this, we now have every opportunity in front of us. You, you've got every opportunity in front of you. And it's up to you to decide where do you want your career to go? What companies do you want to work at? I think a lot of times we apply And we throw our applications into the online abyss and we are so excited to hear back from somebody, some human out there noticed my resume and my application, but this really puts you in a deficit. It puts you in a space where you're willing to take any job that comes at you. But what if you, like Brandon, got an opportunity now to say no to the wrong position and say no to the wrong company so that you can better target and be positioned and strategic about the company and the environment that you do want to work in? This is what's really, um, you know, it just makes me come alive to see like how quickly the tide turns once you just hit that It's like a little speed bump. If you hit it too slow, you're like, oh, I can't really get over it. But once you hit the gas and you take action and you're like, I am moving forward, you put into practice the things that we talk about. I mean, the momentum Brandon has is amazing. And I'm super excited to see where things are going to go with him. Um, But I just wanted to share that that win, that, that highlight of my week, that moment where I remember and Brandon now now recognizes and knows this works. This works. And it's not only a career sort of highlight, it's also this life highlight of like, hey man, it is totally okay to be me. And not only that, I am more likable when I'm me, when I let that little bit of personality come out. So that was my big win. Um, You know, he's able to move on into a second interview. We're super excited about that. Um, But I also know that whether or not he gets this uh, position, it doesn't change the fact that he's got a ton of momentum. His network is now starting to very slowly, but I can see it already. It's about to explode and he's about to have all kinds of networking calls and it's just a fun time. It's a fun time, and I hope that you also have that opportunity to experience that momentum in your career growth. Um, I do have an academy, so I would be remiss if I didn't plug it here, but I've got the Uncommon Career Academy that if you're interested in, head over. It is at rock bottom prices. You will not find another career academy that is going to include this much information, this much one-on-one guidance for that price. And so grab it over at theuncommoncareer.com. It's also linked in the description. But beyond that, beyond the academy, I also want to talk about a couple things that are maybe a little more of a Debbie Downer kind of situation and provide some encouragement. So let me, let me tell you a story. I hope that you're encouraged by this week's episode. In order to continue the work, I need your help. A free, fast, and really easy way to support me and the Uncommon Career Podcast is to rate and review. If you're on Apple Podcasts, you can even do it now while you're listening. You ready? Okay, grab your phone and head to the Uncommon Career Podcast show page. You're going to scroll down and below the list of episodes, you just tap the five star rating. If you have just one more minute, then please also tap write a review and let me and others know which episode or topic impacted you the most. It means the world to me to hear from you, and it also helps others to see that this work is making an impact. Rate and review today and help us move the message forward. A couple weeks ago, um, I just kind of felt in this funk of like, I don't want to record any more podcasts. I don't want to do anything. I just, I just didn't, I don't know, I had lost all motivation for anything having to do with the business, and I didn't know why. 
And so I'm talking to my therapist and I'm like, I don't know why I'm like not really interested in it. And of course, we should be disciplined and, you know, work even if we're not interested in the work. Like we just, we got to work, we got to eat, right? Um, But there was something missing and I couldn't put my finger on it. And one of the things that, uh, one of the realizations that I came to that I thought might be helpful for you is that there are times where I feel overwhelmed or where I feel insecure or where I'm just, I don't know, I just kind of get this analysis paralysis of like, I keep thinking of what could go wrong and focusing on that more than the possibilities, the opportunities that could open up if I just walk through that door. And I think sometimes that comes out of maybe a bit of insecurity or it comes out of a worry or a fear that something bad is going to happen. But I think more than anything else, and and maybe you agree, maybe you're in the same space, but for me, it was the idea that what if what I do doesn't turn out in success? And I'm going to be honest with you, like, I kind of feel like that's awfully prideful of me, like, who am I to think that everything that I do is going to turn out to be successful? Like that's that's unreasonable and that's unrealistic and that's awfully prideful of me. And so it just got me to realize, you know, yes, it's prideful, but it's also a lack of grace. You know, I was when I was talking to my therapist, here we go again, you know, we were just br- bringing up this idea of shame and of grace and the fact that often as humans, we don't give ourselves enough grace. And instead, we're busy shaming ourselves over and over again like we're robots and like we're supposed to be perfect. And I just thought, you know, if you're listening right now and there's something that you feel a little insecure about or something about the future that you're worried about or in some way you've got to put yourself out there, whether it's for a new business, a new job, speaking up at work, asking for a raise, going to your evaluation, going to an interview, applying for positions, making the difficult decision that you do want to change careers. Maybe you're feeling like me. Maybe you just want to avoid it because you're like, I don't even want to touch that monster because it's going to poke at a little insecurity or a fear inside of me. And so I encourage you in that moment, This is what my therapist said. I'm telling you, I'm really loving having a therapist. Like, it's the best thing ever. But one of the things that she said was to consider my younger me, like the child in me or the adolescent in me. And she was like, think about the adolescent in you. What does she need in these moments? Like, think about a time where the adolescent in you is insecure or fearful or worried or shaming herself. What does she need in that moment? And I just, like, it was so brand new to me. I had never thought of myself as like, and it's going to sound funky, but like I had never really thought of myself as like someone who needs something. I was always in survival mode. I was, I always was the person who like, you've got to get this done one way or another, figure it out. You know, I was, um, I don't know. I, I feel like people would sometimes say, oh, you're the rock in your family. And I think, Everyone is a rock for their family in some way, shape, or form. But like, I would hear that and I would take that to heart. Like, yeah, I've got to make things good. I have to make this happen. I have to work hard. Put so much pressure on myself. And now I tend to strive and I always have to catch that. I always have to spend time with God, spend time in my devotional, and remember that I wasn't created to strive and neither were you. And so it brings me back to that moment where, you know, my therapist is like, my counselor was like, you know, what does little Patricia need? And it's such a silly question. I almost feel silly like sharing it on the podcast, but it's true. Like, like ask yourself, if your name's Amy, say, what does little Amy need? If your name is Josh, say, what does little Josh need? And really ask yourself, like visualize you at a younger age when you felt insecure, when you felt, I don't know, fearful, full of worry, when you felt shame, whatever the case might be, ask yourself, what does little me need? And more often than not, you'll find that you just need a little grace. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to get some rest. It's okay to turn around, 
look at Jesus, who you probably left behind like I did, because sometimes I just I just run and I don't recognize that I'm like no longer, you know, walking in the spirit. I'm no longer paying attention to, you know, the lover of my soul. I'm no longer spending time with Jesus. And so I've got to look back from where I've been and say, hey, I I need you like I need you every day. And regardless of what situation it is, whether it's your career, your life, your friendships, school, whatever it might be, I just encourage you to know that it is a perfectly human, I don't know, it's a perfectly human situation to be in if you just all of a sudden are not making progress in what you know you're supposed to be doing. If you know that you're not supposed to be in the job you're currently in, but you just can't get yourself to take the action to move forward, you need an Aaron, which is that person that helped Moses, that that person that had skin, right? God said, I am with you. And Moses basically said, oh gosh, that's not enough. And, And God was like, you know what? It should be enough, but I love you so much that I'm going to send you someone. I'm going to send you Aaron. And maybe that's what you need. Maybe you need an Aaron, someone to encourage you. And I pray that for this moment that I am encouraging you in some way. But just know that if you're having trouble moving forward in your career, in your life, in your relationships, in whatever it might be, maybe you just need a little grace. Maybe you just need to ask yourself, what does little me need? And maybe you just need someone to give you a little encouragement. I hope this has helped you. I know that it's a little bit different from the last few episodes, but I just thought, you know, I cannot be the only person who's like having this issue. (laughs) Like I think mental health and wellness has been um, brought to the forefront of our minds after the pandemic, but also just because so many things are going on in this world with the rise of social media, the rise of working at home and, you know, not getting out as much and getting into the fresh air and socializing that, you know, we need to be really um, intentional about our mental health and about our mental well-being and knowing that it is perfectly normal to be in a funk. Um, but, that we don't have to stay there. And grace and love and having friendships and building relationships and spending time with the Lord is just one of those ways that can help get you out of that funk and back into the life God created for you. I love you, my friend, and I hope this episode has been helpful in one way, shape, or form. Um, But I encourage you to check out this book that my friend... um, My friend recommended to me, it's called The Emotionally Healthy Leader. Now, I can't say that I've read it, but I encourage you to pick it up because she raved about it. I'm going to go pick it up and I will talk to you in a future episode when I share some insights on that and I'm curious to see what you think too. So know that I love you, I'm praying for you, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening. You came to the right place if you're seeking career direction, are ready to launch your career, if you're looking to change positions, or you want to secure the best offer for your next role. And I've created some resources just for you to help you along the way. First, hear his voice with the five steps to God's will for your career. Second, organize your career search. I've got a career transition checklist with seven career phases and over 30 bite-sized strategies for you to check off along the way. Or grab the Bible-based mindset fix. It's a collection of scripture to help you apply truth to negative thoughts so that you can get unstuck and go after your position. Finally, if you have a question that hasn't been answered, then send it in. Email me your question and not only will I answer it, but I'll also give you a shout out on the episode as well. Again, thanks for listening and I'll see you on the next one.